Today we want to look at a subject that um, I've learned in the recent past and that I've discovered if, is of so much importance. Many times we don't take it into consideration, but it is so important to take us to our destiny. As I stand here, I'm not ignorant of the fact that I'm standing before a people whom probably God has given words from time to time. Maybe the Lord spoke to you directly, or maybe he spoke through someone else, and he has been telling you he is taking you to a destiny that is great. He has spoken to you, and he has spoken and told you that greatness is your portion. But maybe you have been praying and trusting God for this word that the Lord gave to you over the years, like I have been praying. But it has taken long. It has taken time. And you've probably been feeling like you did not hear well. Or if it's someone who brought you that word, then you start imagining this person was fake. But the topic we are going to handle today, it's in two dimensions. And uh, we will dwell more on one dimension. God giving us a chance another day. We will look at the, the other dimension. And this is the topic, favor. Turn to your neighbor and tell them favor. We need favor. Turn again to the other one and tell them you need favor. Now, for you to be able to get to your destiny, to that greatness that God has been speaking about in your life, you need favor. You need favor. Favor is like a vehicle that will take you from point A to point B. And I'd like us to read scripture in the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Luke 2 52, this is what the Bible says. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. In favor with God and man. Now Jesus who was God and who is our savior this morning. As he came to earth, the Bible says that he grew, meaning growth is an aspect that we cannot ignore in our lives. Those who are parents here, when you get a baby, you look forward to them growing, growing. Every day you look at them and you want to see at least some level of growth happening. And when they get to around teenage, you begin hearing parents telling them, grow up, because they are expected to behave in a certain way. So growth is an aspect that cannot be ignored. And the Bible says that Jesus grew in stature. All of us have to grow in stature. Stature is where you grow physically. There was a time when you were a baby and your mom had to hold you. But now you're able to walk on your own. Some of us are able to be parents of others right now, meaning we grew in stature. And for us to grow in stature, we also have some input to put in there. You have to eat the right kind of a diet. Uh, you have to exercise so that you can grow in stature. So the Bible says that Jesus grew in stature. The second aspect that Jesus grew in was in wisdom. And we, we too need to grow in wisdom. Now wisdom is where you grow by gaining understanding. By gaining understanding. Uh, it's not enough to say you are born again. That is good and praise the Lord. But you must also grow in wisdom. How do you grow in wisdom? I said by gaining understanding. Where do you get understanding? Understanding you will get uh, the, the greatest part of understanding you'll get from the word of God by reading the word of God, meditating on the word of God. And that's why David at one point in uh, Psalms chapter 119 verse 11 B, he says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. And apart from the Bible, you also gain wisdom by reading other literatures, meaning you must be a person of the books. You have to learn how to read books. And by listening or uh, watching the right kind of stuff, videos, the right kind of videos, what do I mean by this? There are certain types of videos that we will watch and that in most cases we spend a lot of time watching, yet they do not add value. They only entertain our ego. Like the series 
that we keep watching. You can find a person watching a series for an entire night, even missing sleep. But at the end of the day, it only causes you to entertain your ego. But there are videos that if you watch or audios that if you listen, then you will begin to gain understanding because they'll be addressing particular areas in our lives. So for us to grow in wisdom, we need to watch videos. We need to listen to audios. We need to read books. But today we want to concentrate on the latter part of that scripture that says, he also grew in favor with God and with man. Born as if he will. Favor with God and with man. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you need to have favor with God and favor with man. Many times as Christians, we found ourselves saying, all I need is favor with God alone. If that were the case, then it wouldn't have been recorded in scripture that Jesus grew in favor with man. So we both need favor with God and favor with man for us to be able to get to the destiny that God has been speaking about us uh, to us from time to time. Now then, what is favor? What is favor? And as we look at it, we realize that favor is appearing. Favor is appearing in two dimensions. One is what we have called favor with God. And the other one is favor with man. Today, we'll just brush a little bit on favor with man. But we are going to dwell on favor with God. Favor from the dictionary is approval, support, preference, or liking for someone or something. I will repeat, favor is approval, support, preference, or liking of someone or something. That's favor. Favor can also be defined as when God and men participate in your success or progress by supplying their resources, relationships, and leverage. There is a place you cannot go, you cannot reach until God has supplied you with the necessary resources. And these resources, he will not drop them from heaven so that they come packed in a sack onto earth. No, he will use men. So the resources, uh, the resources will come from God through men to you. And that's why you need favor with men. Because if this person whom God wants to use to bless you, you are not in favor with them. And yet they're the ones who are supposed to be used to give you the resource. Then you might end up marching on the same spot for the rest of your life. So you need favor with man too. Now having papers is good. Having credentials is good. You can have your degree. It is very, very good. And going to school is important. I'm not underrating that. It is very important. I'm a person who is pro-education. It is very good. Hard work is also very, very good. Diligence is even the best. But you know what? Papers, hard work, and diligence can only take you to a particular level where they're able to take you. Now, the rest of the journey, you need favor to take you there. So you put together all your papers, all your hard work, all your diligence, and then on top of it, God adds favor with himself and favor with men. Then you'll be able to get to the place where you need to get. Now, favor also can remove you or can bring you from the background to the front. Favor. It can bring you from the background to the front. Favor does not care where you are coming from or what kind of a family you are coming from. You could be coming from a family that was very poor, a family that was very disadvantaged. But once the Lord breathes favor in your life, you'll be able to get to levels where you'd otherwise not have gotten to. So we need favor. The Bible talks of a young man by the name Joseph. Joseph has been arrested. He has gone through so much. But today, let's just look at, he has been arrested. And he is in prison. But because one day, favor was breathed into his life, he sleeps, he goes to bed as a prisoner. 
And by the following morning, he has been summoned by the king. And by the evening of that day when he was summoned by the king, he has been transformed into a prime minister. That's what favor is able to do to you. That's what favor is able to do to you. It's able to bring you from the background into the front ground. And so if there is anything you need to pray for in your life, very violently, it is the aspect of favor. When you go to the presence of the Lord, many times you start asking God, give me money. Oh God, give me a car. The one thing that is much more important than money, than cars, than houses is favor. Because all those other things will ride on the wings of favor. The houses will come as a result of you being favored. The money will come as a result of you being favored. And so in this dispensation, if you can get a chance and tell God, I want you to favor me. And I want you to give me favor with men. How then do we attract favor from men? He said we are brushing men, then we will settle at God. How do we get favor from men? Tell your neighbor through number one, honor. Honor. <laughs> honor. What is honor? Honor is being able to celebrate someone because of their uniqueness and because of the grace that is upon their lives. The truth that we normally should realize is that in life, there will be people who will always be ahead of you. Whereas, there will also be people who will be behind you. There will be people who will be better than you in some particular areas. And there'll be people whom you'll be better than in some specific areas. And so when we are saying honor, honor is where you are able to celebrate someone because of the grace that is upon their lives, grace that is not in your own life. Let me give us an example. We are privileged to serve under our bishop and our mom. Buoneso asifiwe. When we stand, like now I'm standing on this altar, it's not because I just emerged and I was the best. No, it's because their hand has been used to raise me. Their hand has been part of what you're seeing in my life. If it were God alone and they did not participate, I wouldn't be here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so anytime when I'm standing, I need to acknowledge the fact that there is a grace that has been upon them that has caused me to be here. I'm standing upon their shoulders. And so even if I'm able to do something that they were not able to do, I can never at any one point start bragging that I have gone ahead of them because I can never be ahead of them. If they were to be removed, their shoulders were to be removed, I have no place to stand. I will have no place to stand. And so it is up to me, for me to continue receiving favor, it's up to me to give them honor. Hallelujah. Now, honor is not worship. Honor is different from worship. Honor, honoring men, causes them. To favor you. Causes God to touch their hearts. To favor you. We have the person of the president of Kenya. President Uhuru Kenyatta. Who many times we are sitting back and saying. He has not done. He has not done. He has not done this. He has not done the other. And we are almost. Or many times. Cheated that we can. Dishonor him. We talk bad about him. But I want to bring it to you today. That you know what? There is a grace, even if he is not born again, there is a grace upon the president of Kenya that is not upon you and it is not upon me. That's why he is president and you are not. Born as if you were. <laughs> That's why he can call the shots and we can't. Because God has released a grace upon him. 
And for us to be blessed as Kenyans and as Christians, then we need to honor him. We need to be so afraid to participate in wicked talks about him. Honor. Honor for our parents will bring us favor. The Bible says, honor your father and mother that it may go well with you. So if you need favor outside there, start honoring from home. That's how to get favor from man. The second thing you can do to get favor from man is bring value to the table. Bring value. For those of us who are privileged to be working or serving under people, bring value to the table. Serve them with competence. Be able to uh, translate the value you are bringing to the organization into goods and services that will make that organization better. And that's why we go, when we go for interviews, most of the times you'll be asked a question, what will you bring to this organization that will make it better? What in essence they're asking, what value are you bringing in this place? And even if you're just in a church, what value are you adding in this CIK? Do you just come and sit on the seats and go home? What is your value that you bring into this place? It might be something small, but it is able to make the atmosphere conducive for worship. So we need to be a people of value. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16, Proverbs chapter 18 Verse 16, a gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. What in essence they are saying, the value you are carrying is what will usher you into the presence of the great. You want to sit with the great people, then bring value. The third thing for man still just brushing is that you need to have worthwhile contacts. Worthwhile contacts. Just, don't just have contacts. And as I'm talking about worthwhile relationships and worthwhile contacts, maybe at the back of your mind, you can scroll your phone contacts and check out, are they adding value? Are they adding value to you? Those people who have been, wale wa mejaza phone yako, 500 imeja. Apo napata mwangi wanyama. Sijui nani wa maziwa. You know the way we normally name them. Are they people who are adding value to your life? Because you will always be as wealthy as your contacts. Bona sifiwe. As wealthy as your contact. I remember I was telling the first service. I've had this... Um, saying used a lot among the Kikuyu brothers and sisters. At the Ado Neido. <laughs> yes. Neoido. Thank you. Ado Neoido. People are wealth. So if you want favor, Look at your relationships. You should have a people that when you're going through stuff, you can take your phone, call them, and you know you will be sorted. Not just people filling your phone. And from today, when you go back home, check that phone book and find out if there are people who are not adding value. What are you going to do? Delete. Mm-hmm. And then number four of having favor is pray for favor. Pray for favor. If anything, every day when you're praying for yourself, when you're praying for your children, pray for favor. Pray that God will release upon them favor. Now then, how do we gain favor with God? Because that's our main topic today. We gain favor with God by, number one, releasing our life to him in salvation. 
and then loving him with all that we have got. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Proverbs 3, 1 to 4. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. And they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of both God and man. Loving God. Obeying his commands. And the Bible describes very clearly what loving God means. In the book of John chapter 14 verse 21. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them. What that teaches me here is that it's not enough just for me to say, you know, Lord, I love you. I love you. Uh -uh. What love really means, love is a doing word here. It is a verb. It's a doing one. It's me keeping his commandments. It's me walking in righteousness. It's me obeying everything that he commands me to do. Then it will be said that I love him. Hallelujah. And I'd want us to look at just one example of a woman in scripture. Then I'll be through and I'll get out of here. In the book of Esther, chapter 2, verse 7 to 17. A woman who obtained favor before the king. Esther, chapter 2, verse 7 to 17. The Bible says, Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, whom he had brought up because she had, she had neither father nor mother. This young woman, who was also known as Esther, had a lovely figure. Born as if you were had a lovely what? Figure. <laughs> and was beautiful. Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when her father and mother died. When the king's order and edict had been proclaimed, many young women were brought to the citadel of Susa and put under the care of Haggai. Esther was, uh, also was taken to the king's palace and entrusted to Haggai, who had charge of the harem. She pleased him and won his favor. So Esther appears right where the other women were. And the Bible says that Haggai was pleased with Esther. And she won his favor. Immediately he proved her with her beauty. He provided her with her beauty treatments and special food. He assigned to her seven female attendants selected from the king's palace and moved her and her attendants into the best place in the harem. So because of favor, she has been taken to the best place. She has been given attendants who are the best. She pleased him. Uh -huh. Let's go to verse 10. Esther had not revealed her nationality and family background because Mordecai had forbidden, forbidden her to do so. Every day, he walked back and forth near the courtyard of the harem to find out how Esther was and what was happening to her. Before a young woman stand to go into King Xerxes, she had to complete 12 months of beauty treatments prescribed for the women, six months with oil of Maya and six with perfumes and cosmetics. Those who are married, born as if you... We normally complain that our wives are taking forever in the mirror, yet they have only taken 30 minutes. Now you can see what was happening. Now this is how she would go to the king. Anything she wanted given to her to take with her, was given to her to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. In the evening she would go there and in the morning return to another part of the harem to the care of Shazgaz the king's eunuch who was in charge of the concubines. She would not return to the king unless he was pleased with her and summoned her by name. When the uh, turn came for Esther, the young woman Mordecai had adopted, the daughter of his uncle Abihail, 
to go to the king, she asked for nothing, underline that, other than what Haggai, the king's eunuch, who was in charge of the harem, suggested. And Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her, underline he appear. She won the favor of everyone who saw her. 16. She was taken to King Xerxes in the royal residence in the 10th month, the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. Now the king was attracted to Esther more than to any other of the women, and she won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Hallelujah. When we look at Esther, she had all the disadvantages. She is coming from a Jewish community, and they are in captivity. So they are like slaves. She has been raised, she's an orphan, and she has been raised by the cousin who was working within the palace of the king, but he was working as a watchman. That is the second disadvantage because most of the times we don't regard the watchmen. Actually, we pass them and many times we tell them, you need to know who I am as we are passing. Hmm? And then Esther was just one among many women who had fronted themselves. All of them were seeking for the position of queen. There were about 400 plus women. Some had volunteered, some were presented by their parents, and some of the parents who had presented their daughters were working in the palace, and maybe some were holding key official statuses in the palace. And so she's in the midst of all these things. Everything disadvantageous is with her. But the Bible says this one very thing, that as soon as she walked into that place, into the harem where they were supposed to be taken, she found favor with Haggai who was supposed to be taking care of the ladies. Meaning what? She must have done something that caused her to find favor with Haggai. You don't just meet a person for the first time and you find favor. She must have been respectful. She must have been a woman who honored everybody they met. And so, be, 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 based on how she had reacted to Haggai, Haggai gave her favor and picked the best of attendance for her and picked the best room for her and placed her right there. Honor still comes. There are people you may not honor, yet they are the ones who are holding your blessings. Buona asifiwe. We said we are honoring the graces that are, are above us. But it's also very important to honor each other's grace. Because as I'm sitting here, I could be in prayer for something. And that thing that I need is with my neighbor who is seated next to me. So, hey guy, uh, uh, was honored. And as a result, Esther is placed in the best of places. The Bible says that she was provided with the beauty products that she needed. And in those days, you were not in a hurry to go and see the king. Esther was not in a hurry. She had come from a poor background, and now it looked like there was an opportunity that was glaring at her for her to become queen. But she never rushed anything. She waited. And she waited. She did everything that was expected of her as she had been advised by Haggai. She soaked herself into the oil of mire. Soaked herself for six months, soaking herself until I want to believe that as she passed by the people, it was not Esther who was smelling, but the oil of mire was what was smelling around her. Then she was able to put the makeup, the cosmetics that were required for one whole year. Patiently for one whole year. I was reading that part and I was getting amazed. And I was wondering, many times we look at our young ladies, like I normally ask them when I see them with makeup. I don't know, they are put eyeshadows and some of them even add the eyelashes, you know, they put new ones until you, you are looking at them and you're like, you don't look very natural. Exactly what has gone wrong, you know. <laughs> and they take a lot of time to put everything just right. And many times I keep asking them, where do you get the time? Maybe because of where I was raised. It's only the grace of God that has made us what we are today. <laughs> Amen. 
So this woman was beautifying herself for a whole year. And it was until her time came. And I want to bring it to us today. Never to be in a hurry. God spoke that he's taking you for greatness. He is never late. Neither is he too early. At the right time, he will place you where he promised you are going to be. Did he promise that he's promoting you? Please continue waiting on him. Continue soaking yourself in this oil. Because in due season, he is going to take you because he is a promise keeper. Bona Esther waited. He, she was not in a hurry. And she was quiet. She was not a woman who was a talker. The Bible says in verse 10 that she never even revealed her identity. Many times our breakthroughs are aborted because of the way we talk. We talk too much. Too much. Even things that you're supposed to keep to yourself. You are looking for an opportunity to find someone whom you can share it with. There are times when you need to shut up. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 14 and verse 15. Verse 15, it talks of, why are the children of Israel, Israel crying to me? Tell them to advance. And then verse 14, before they are being told to advance, they are being told, can you tell them to shut up? If you read in the message translation, tell them to shut up and move on because you cannot be advancing while at the same time murmuring. You will find yourself spending more energy in the complaining, more energy in the gossip, more energy in the murmuring as opposed to advancing. Yet God is saying, can you stop it? Can you shut up? Can you stop talking? Because I am at this thing with you. It is your time to keep taking steps forward so that you will be able to get to the destiny I promised to give you. Hallelujah. And so for us to get there, we need to shut up like Esther did. We need to do more listening than talking. Hallelujah. Now, when the time for Esther to go to the, harem, uh, to the palace came, the Bible says that Esther asked for nothing apart from what was advised by the king, by, by, by harem, the king's servant. By her guy. She did not ask for anything. Why? Because she was very fully aware that this her guy man had lived with the king. He knew what was going to be pleasing to the king. He knew the kind of makeup that the king was going to be pleased with. He knew the kind of dressing that the king was going to be pleased with. And therefore, any advice that he offered was going to be good for her. We have our hair guy in the name of the Holy Spirit. He knows the heart of the Father. He knows how we need to present ourselves before the Father for the Father to be pleased. But many times we want to dress in our own way. The Bible says, when you put on the garments of praise, the spirit of heaviness dispatches. The Bible says that, the Lord dwells in the praises of his people. And so how are we going to appear before the king after we have soaked ourselves in worship, after we have soaked ourselves in the oil of mire and put on all the makeup that we've been given, we must put on a garment of praise. Not a garment of murmuring. It is true I have gone through stuff. It is true. I've been having sicknesses and diseases. It is true. My house has been locked for lack of money. It is true. I have tarmacked for a very long time. But I'm not going to put on the garment of murmuring. I will put on the garment of praise. Because that is when I will attract my king. Hallelujah. And so Esther went. <laughs> And as she was walking, into, walking right into the palace after being beautified by her guy, being given the advice, and I can see her walking. And the Bible says that everybody around the palace, everybody who saw her, she found favor with them. And I'm thinking of Esther 
as a young lady in our current dispensation because of having spent time in the presence of God and you are beautiful inside of and out. Esther could have said, I want to start looking side by side. See how I want to need if you You know the way the men of Geshagi call girls. I normally tell my daughter, please do not turn because you're not a chicken. Bonus if you And maybe these guys who are working in the palace are all calling out to Esther because she's smelling good. She's not smelling of human flesh. <laughs> she's smelling good of the cosmetics. But Esther is walking on. She is not turning to the right. She is not turning to the left. Why? Because her focus is the king. It is her day with the king. Hallelujah. It is her day with the king. It is her turn. She has waited for a whole year to get in with the king. And now it is her turn to get in with the king. Nothing will stop her. Not even the beauty of the palace is going to stop her. Many times we are stopped by the beauty of the palace. And we forget whom we were supposed to fall in love with. We find ourselves falling in love with the palace. My brother, my sister. We were not called to fall in love with the palace or the the people who are in the palace, we have been called to fall in love with the king because only he can give us favor. When you fall in love with the palace, then you will find yourself standing here, for instance, I can only use an example of the team I served with here, that you can find yourself as a worshiper standing here and all you are doing, you are dancing to the best you know how so that maybe the cameras can catch you catch up with you and you will shine in the media or you are dancing all you can so that the leaders here can spot you that was not our agenda in the first place we were to fall in love with the king hallelujah when you fall in love with the palace and the people in the palace then any small offense will make you say I am going to another church hallelujah you start saying, I cannot serve in that department anymore. That Sunday school teacher did this to me. I am not going to serve in the Sunday school anymore. Hmm? That usher who, I don't know, did what? I'm not going to serve as an usher anymore. How can they look at me like that? My friend, it was to an audience of one from the beginning. It was to an audience of one. And if the king is pleased with us, then it doesn't matter who else is bothering us. We have been beautifying ourselves for the king, not for the palace. We have been beautifying ourselves not for the men in the palace, but for the king. Because it is he who gives us favor. And I wind up by saying, as Esther got to the king, the king was pleased with her and put a gold crown upon her head. Meaning what? All the other girls who were there, who were beautifying themselves, became any other business. But she was the main business. Hallelujah. She was the main business. If you want to be the main business to the king of kings, then you have to be focused in loving the Lord. You have to be focused in serving the Lord. You have to be focused in spending time with the King of Kings. And you have to be focused in making yourself beautiful. In this aspect, the makeup, it is not just for women, but even men have to keep on soaking themselves in the oil of mire. They have to keep on using the cosmetics because the King is waiting for you. The King is waiting to spend time of intimacy with you and he will give you favor at the end of the day father in the name of jesus oh we give you praise we give you glory lord 
because you have been good to us. Jehovah God, how we pray that you're going to help us to walk in a manner worthy of the call that you've given us, our Father. The Lord, in times when we have complained and murmured, my King, you're going to help us to shut up, oh God, and focus on that which, oh God, will give us favor with you. King of glory, let us focus on how we are going to continue soaking ourselves in your presence, oh God, that when we appear before your presence, oh Jehovah God, we will not be smelling of ourselves Oh God, but we'll be smelling of the heavenlies in the name of Jesus. Thank you for every brother and every sister who has heard me speak today. How I pray that our lives are going to be transformed and that Jesus will help us to grow in favor with men and in favor with God. Receive every praise, Daddy, and receive all honor. In Jesus' name we pray.